the ancient schools of yoga, Zen, Advaita, Hermeticism, all realized that there's only one available move when it comes to beating the ego at its own game, and that is to observe it to death. To observe it with such degree of detail and clarity and detachment that the mental structures that keep the ego in place become eroded over time and eventually completely transparent. This channel is Meditation Amsterdam. My name is Pablo. Today I want to talk about why it is that we cannot outsmart the ego and therefore we should probably stop trying to uh, play games with ourselves that give us the impression that we might be on the road to enlightenment when in reality we are simply rearranging deck chairs in the Titanic, so to speak. So, in previous videos I've made several attempts at describing the situation that we find ourselves in when we start with spiritual cultivation and self-realization practices. One of the such videos is uh, in the Gurdjieff series in which Gurdjieff makes it very plain that the work is very, very intense, very steep, very demanding. And that one of the reasons that people don't even embark in the work of self-cultivation is because they think that they are already an autonomous unity and that they are uh, already free, that they, are, or they, they already possess free will and full autonomy and that they are fully individuated because part of the illusion that keeps you trapped is the illusion of believing that you are already free, as a matter of fact. So it's a very insidious type of illusion. I've also attributed some of this idea that you can't outsmart the ego at the notion that the ego is not just a thought, is not just a belief like any other. It is an entire orientation of the mind, which is kept up by a whole web of object relations inside the mind that is created in our formative years, which I compare to the analogy of the matrix. And that so long as that we are trapped within this matrix of object relations, whichever decision we take, whichever course of action we decide to go for, is already egoic from the get-go because all the perceptions that led to that decision are already egoic. So there's no really getting around it. You cannot be fast enough because it's where you're coming from. It's your very identity, as a matter of fact. And there's no outsmarting that. There's no uh, quick technique. There's no clever angle that you can take um, in order to get around that that would deliver on the actual self-realization and, and liberation that, um, that we're looking for if we're into these cultivative practices. So... Um, I wanted to dispel that notion because we often when we start the self-cultivation path, we are under the impression that we can manipulate things and either act in very specific ways, for example, acting aloof, in other words, exercising equanimity to prove that we are getting around the ego. Or we can be uh, overtly nice to people to prove that we are less egoic than we used to be. But really, in that case, we're only maybe tempering our egotism, right? We're not becoming less egoic. <clears throat> it's just that we are presenting to the world a nicer face of the ego. But the ego is still there as a full construct that is not going away. Um, <clears throat> so it kind of reminds me of, uh, of the movie The Devil's Advocate with Al Pacino, 
in which in one of the closing scenes when he reveals that he's the devil, he makes fun of uh, the game that humanity is trying to play to please God, in which we're jumping from one foot to the next, trying to figure out what is it that God wants or, you know, what is the course of action? What is the attitude? What is the thought? What is the right emotion? What is the right orientation of mind that will get us through the eye of a needle that, that'll, that'll make us liberated. And as it turns out, is none of those things because, as I said originally, the ego cannot be outsmarted. You cannot outwit it. You can't be fast enough because it is your very identity. It is where you're coming from. And <clears throat> uh, therefore, uh, this is a quick video as an invitation to simply realize that and you know stop trying tactical little moves to uh, feel like you're making progress and you're becoming less egoic because it simply doesn't work like that. The only thing that works for liberation from the ego is the erosion, the systematic erosion of your mental object relations, including that one at the root of it all, which is the sense of individual self which is nothing but a construct among other constructs, but it is the one that keeps the entire tree of mental reality in place. So if you are doing practices to gain equanimity when you are emotionally dysregulated, that is pointing you towards eroding certain mental structures that are dysfunctional. And if you do enough of that work, then you can start going after mental structures that are functional, which sounds a little bit strange, but it's something that you eventually have to do because what we're trying to do is we are trying to get around mental structures in general because they are filters that get between our, ourselves and our direct perception of reality. And <clears throat> so those are... Uh, la later in the uh, in the game, they are later in your developing uh, phases. Uh, much more tricky to uh, to notice, and the self is such structure. So the self is what you could call a relatively functional structure uh, that is very difficult to see, very difficult to uh, pin down, and very difficult to erode. And many mental barriers will be um, coming up to prevent that from happening. Um, that's the only way to actually become free from ego. That's the only way to actually become self-realized. Uh, any other tactical move in terms of, you know, speaking softly or, you know, I, I see people in, in yoga lessons giving themselves these big long hugs and all this kind of business. Um, and it's like, uh, that's, you know, speaking in a soft and spiritual voice, right? you know, wearing pendants and, you know, or, or, you know, ohm tattoos and all this kind of stuff. None of that stuff will, will get you any closer to this because you have to go for uh, a true change in the psyche that is um, created through practices that are there to, uh, as I said, um, essentially bring down the matrix of object relations that you might created during your formative years. So, um, I hope that uh, is helpful. Uh, as usual, I'm very curious to hear what you have to say in the comment section. And always keep in mind that if uh, you find this content to be uh, useful, that uh, liking, sharing and subscribing would make it more available to others. And as usual, I'll be back with more videos pretty soon. And until then, cheerio and bye bye.